let's make understanding the unit circle and its properties as easy as possible. We're going to start by labeling all of the common angles and radians, and then we'll go back and label all of the points. Now this unit circle has a radius of one, and I'm going to go ahead and travel around the unit circle starting here at my positive x axis. Now if I'm starting at the positive x axis, that means I haven't traveled any angle at all. So I'm here at zero radians. If I go up to the positive y axis, I've traveled 90 degrees, which is equivalent to pi halves. If I travel over here, I am at two of those pi halves, but we can go ahead and reduce that two pi halves to just be a pi. And then traveling again, I've got one, two, this is going to be three pi halves. And then traveling again, I'm counting off by these pi halves. This gives me four pi halves, also known as two pi. Let's do the same now using a different angle. Next, let's divide up that rotation of the unit circle into 45 degree increments or pi fourths. I'm going to go ahead and draw in where that first 45 degree angle or pi fourths lands us. So I can label this first angle as pi fourths. Now I'm going to be counting in pi fourths. So when I end up going another pi fourths and I'm here, that means that I am at 2 pi fourths, but 2 pi fourths reduces to pi halves. I'm going to label the rest of the 45 or pi fourths increments. And let's go ahead and count and label these. So this first one here was at pi fourths. The second one is 2 pi fourths, which reduces 2 pi halves. So that means that this next one here is at 3 pi fourths. And next is 4 pi fourths, which reduces to pi. Continuing to count, the next one then is going to be at 5. So I've got 5 pi fourths. And then straight down, I'm at 6 pi fourths, but that does reduce to 3 pi halves. So continuing to count, this was 5, this was 6, so this has got to be 7 pi fourths. And then finally, that means that this is 8 pi fourths, which reduces to 2 pi and lands us on the same place that we were at when we were at 0. I'm going to tackle those 60 degree angles or pi thirds next. This first 60 degree angle is here, and that's going to be at pi thirds. Let's go ahead and put that next 60 degree angle in. So 60 degree angles further. That one is here. And if the first one is 1 pi thirds, this one must be at 2 pi thirds. I'm expecting the next 60 degrees to be at 3 pi thirds, which is exactly where we end up. 3 pi thirds, of course, reduces to pi. I'm going to put the rest of my 60 degree or pi thirds increments up here, and we'll go ahead and label the rest of them. I've got everybody up here. Let's continue to count in pi thirds. At pi, we were at 3 pi thirds. That means that this next increment is at 4 pi thirds. Traveling another pi thirds, I am at 5 pi thirds. And then that last 60 degrees gets me to 6 pi thirds, which again reduces to 2 pi. I've got one more common angle to put up here, and that's pi sixths or 30 degrees. So this first one's going to be labeled as pi sixths. I'm going to get to the next one. As I'm counting in pi sixths, I end up with two pi sixths here, but two pi sixths reduces to my pi thirds. So I'm going to be doubling up a lot on these, but I'm still continuing to count pi sixths, two pi sixths, which means that this next one, is going to be 3 pi sixths, which of course reduces to pi halves. I'm going to put the rest of those pi sixths increments up here, and then let's get them all labeled. Let's continue labeling, and then I'm going to get rid of the duplicates when I'm done, but it's really easy to label if you keep all of them. So I've got 1, 2, 3 pi sixths, which means that this next 30 degree or pi sixths angle movement is going to get me at 4 pi sixths. And then another 30 degrees gets me to 5 
pi six. And then I must be landing on six pi six, which reduces to pi. Another 30 degrees gets me to seven pi sixths. And then we end up at eight pi sixths. Straight down puts me at nine pi sixths. And then 30 degrees more, that would be this one right here, that puts me at 10 pi sixths. And then my last, well, I guess I've got two more. This is 11 pi sixths. And then that final pi sixths angle movement puts me at 12 pi sixths. Now let's get rid of all of the ones that are doubled up. And there's quite a few here. So this gives us all of those common radian angles as we're moving around one rotation of the unit circle. Next, we're gonna label the points on the unit circle that correspond to each of these angles. I'm gonna show you a really easy way to do that. Let me clean up these angles first. All of my point values come from either my pi fourths or 45, 45, 90 triangle with hypotenuse one. If I've got a hypotenuse moment one, that means I've got radical two over two for the lengths of my other legs. Or from a pi sixths or 30, 60, 90 triangle, across from that pi six or that smaller measure is a one half. Across from the pi thirds or the bigger angle measure, I've got a radical three over two. And of course that radius is gonna equal one. Let's go ahead and label these values as I move around the unit circle. So this very first point here, I've got an X value of one and a Y value of zero. If I go up to this 90 degree angle and I'm straight up here, I've got an X value of zero and a Y value of one. Now I'm going to go ahead and label each of these other points here. And as I'm labeling these other points, I'm going to be counting. This is such a nice shortcut. So for the X's, I'm going to count in halves from zero up to one. So I'm going to go ahead and start with one over two and then a radical two over two, and then a radical three over two. Now I'm gonna do my Y values, and I'm gonna again count from zero to one, but moving in the other direction. So moving in the other direction, I get one over two, radical two over two, and then radical three over two. And this labels both my X and my Y values. And X is on the unit circle, the cosine of our angle. Y on the unit circle is the sine of our angle. Now I wanna get these in all four of my quadrants and it's really easy to move from this quadrant to the others. Let's start with our 90 degree angles first. So I know that here at 180, I've got an X value of negative one and a Y value of zero. Straight down, this is gonna be at 270 degrees or three pi halves. Um, I've got an X value of zero and a Y value of negative one. Now here come the signs in each of my quadrants. In quadrant number two, I've got negative X values, but positive Y values. Over here in quadrant number three, everybody is negative. So I've got negative, negative. And in quadrant number four, I've got um, positive X's and negative Y's. Let's go ahead and use these to label our values as we're moving around the circle. Let's start by doing our X values. And I'm gonna go from zero to negative one, starting right here. So that's gonna be a one over two, but these are negative. And then a negative radical two over two, and then a negative radical three over two. And then counting back up, these are positive. So I've got one half, comma, positive radical two over two, comma, radical three over two. And I can do the same thing in each of these other quadrants. You guys are doing so good. Practice setting up this unit circle on your own. Thanks so much for watching.